Now, I've, I've tagged these as favorites up here. And the reason that I tag these as favorites, because I'm going to leverage these to create what we call a configuration, which is a way to think of um, another iteration of this model. And the configurations that I'm going to be creating are going to be driving the overall width of my toolbox and the overall height of this toolbox. Right. So again, we're going to be changing the overall height and overall width of these um, items. Now, those dimensions are going to be this 12 inch dimension right here. Right. So I'm going to actually give that a name. I'm going to call this a uh, width toolbox. That way you can easily identify it here in just a second. And we've already set up our other dimensions. So now, how am I going to do this without having to hit file, save as, or pack and go, or all sorts of crazy things? What I like to do is I'd like to leverage the, the power of, of an Excel table. I'm going to hit insert. We're going to go down here to tables, and we're going to use this option called Excel design table. Now, when I choose Excel design table, I'm going to tell SolidWorks to go ahead and auto create me this Excel table. And I want it to use all the parameters that I've already built into the model to generate what we call a configuration. When I do that, it's going to start my Excel table and it's going to ask me for the dimensions that I'm going to be changing from variation to vari variation. In this case, I'm going to choose the depth. I'm going to choose the height. We'll go ahead and choose the width of the toolbox and the height of the end cap. Now I'm doing this by holding control on my keyboard and selecting all the appropriate dimensions. And once I hit okay, what SOLIDWORKS is gonna do, it's gonna start an Excel table for me and it's gonna put those values in columns and it's gonna give me the ability to add more rows to these columns. And every time I add a row, it's gonna add what we call a configuration. Now I'm gonna add, for the sake of the example here, I'm gonna add three variations to this. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm selling now a small toolbox. I wanna sell a medium toolbox and I want to sell a large toolbox. Now these, you can see, are being driven by a variable. But these are being driven by static values that I'm going to want to change. Now all four of these are going to start off as the same. So I'm going to use just standard Excel uh, um, commands. And I'm going to copy these. And then once I have them copied, I'm going to go ahead and change the things that I want to change. For the small toolbox, I'm going to make this a little bit more narrow. The medium toolbox will leave um, at 12, but I'd like to change the height of the end cap to say 10. And for the large toolbox, I'm going to go ahead and change both values. I'm going to make it larger in both width, and I'm going to make it larger in height. Now, when I do that, the second that I click off of that, it's going to go ahead and save that design table, and it's going to create those configurations. Now, if you've never seen a configuration before, the configuration is actually managing what we call a configuration manager. And what this is doing is it's giving me the ability to iterate in the same file that has all this intelligence into it to create more part numbers, which in turn will generate my flat patterns that I'm going to need. Now, let's go ahead and see what SolidWorks did for me here. If I double click on any of these configurations, it's going to activate those configurations, and you're going to notice that these models automatically update. Since I leveraged a multi-body part and I designed these in context of each other, all of my clearances stay maintained. All of my interferences should still be no interferences. And all of the intelligence is built now into a single file, which I can use and leverage to create multiple iterations of this much quicker and much more efficient than previously before.